Hello students, this is second video of the chapter data collection in which we are going to talk about methods of sampling. But before starting with methods of sampling, let's recap what we have studied till now. Till now, we have studied primary and secondary sources of data collection. I hope you all can recall that primary data is first hand data correct collected directly from the source whereas secondary data is second hand data collected indirectly from some other source. For example, conducting an interview is primary data collection whereas reading that interview published in a magazine is secondary source of data. We have also studied five methods of primary data collection that is direct personal interview, indirect oral investigation, telephonic interview, information through correspondent and questionnaire method. Each method has its own merits and demerits and choice of method depends upon the nature of research. Now. Let's assume that we choose direct personal interview to collect information on usage of social media in school. Now, the first question that arises here is whether direct personal interview is to be conducted for all students of a school or for few selected students. So, if we go in for option 1, that is we conduct interview for all students present in a school then that method is known as census method whereas if we conduct interview for only few selected students of school then that method is known as sampling method and here in this video we are going to study about sampling methods in detail but before proceeding to sampling method let's look at both these options that is option 1 when data is collected from all units of area under investigation as I told you it is known as census method. As you can see in this picture all students are giving the response whereas if we go in for the second option that is when we collect data from few units that is here you can see in the picture that only two students are giving the response then that is known as sampling method. Obviously, since census involve all units, it is an extensive method where a sampling is limited as only few units are taken in this method. Census requires large amount of money, time and labor whereas sampling requires relatively less time, money and labor since all units are not investigated. Therefore, census is more reliable, whereas sampling is not much reliable. Now, coming to sampling in detail. Samples can be drawn on two bases. That is, samples can be drawn by applying some law, formula or calculation or simply by the value judgment of the investigator, samples can be drawn. So, if we apply certain law, theory or calculation to draw the sample, then it is known as random sampling. Whereas, if we draw samples on the basis of just value judgment, then it is known as non-random sampling. As it can be seen here, that if a teacher selects any four students for a competition as per her own value judgment, then it is a non-random sampling method. Whereas, if teacher follows any method such as drawing a lottery without using her own value judgment, then that method is known as random sampling method. Now, coming to random sampling in detail, there are four methods under the random sampling method. First and foremost, the easiest method is simple random sampling. In simple random sampling, all items of population have an equal chance of being selected that is either lottery or any other method such as drawing chits or numbers is used to draw sample from the population this method is relatively easy time saving and cost effective but one of the problem with this method is it might not give 
representation to minority elements as you can see here that there are 10 individuals from which two samples are to be drawn from these 10 individuals only two are female and rest other are male so there is a high chance that the sample drawn will have only males as female are in minority here so in order to overcome this problem there is another method which is known as stratified sampling in this method we make groups on the basis of common characteristic and then we draw a sample from each group this method overcomes the demerit of simple random sampling in which minority groups can be left behind so as you can see here we draw samples from two different groups one group is of males and other group is of females one sample is drawn from the male group and other sample is drawn from the female group thus both groups get equal representation if we adopt stratified sampling third method is very easy and is based on calculation it is known as systematic sampling under this method all units of population are arranged in an order then we pick up sample by simply applying a formula which says that sample drawn will be equal to total population upon number of samples required as you can see here there are 10 individuals and we require two sample so sample drawn will be 10 that is total population divided by 2 that is number of samples which is 5 so every fifth unit will be selected as the sample as you can see here the girl at number 5 and boy at number 10 is the sample this method is also an easy method but again like simple random sampling there are high chances that minority doesn't get representation here last method that we are going to discuss here of random sampling is cluster sampling this cluster sampling is used when we have to draw samples from different areas here a bigger area is divided into smaller parts known as clusters which can be further divided into sub clusters then sample is derived from each cluster as you can see here we have divided the entire area in four zones east west north south and then from each zone or cluster an individual sample has been drawn this method is appropriate when a wide area is to be covered and equal representation is to be given to each and every sub area present in that wide area now Coming to non-random sampling which is not based on any method or law as we have seen in the case of random sampling. Here samples are drawn simply on the basis of value judgment of the investigator. That is it could be purposive. For example if I have to conduct a survey on eating habits of teenagers then obviously my sample will be teenagers. It could be on the basis of convenience. For example, in order to conduct the same survey, I might select teenagers from my nearby areas. Or it can be judgmental, that is, I can use my own value judgment to draw the sample. Obviously, this is more easy as compared to random sampling, but there is a high chance of bias involved in non random sampling since. It is based on value judgment and not based on any rule, law or theory. Now, recapitulating what we have studied till now, we have studied that primary data can be collected for all units or for some units. If primary data is collected for all units, then that method is known as census method, whereas if it is collected for few units, then that is known as sampling method sampling can be random or non-random random sampling is further divided into simple stratified systematic and cluster whereas non-random sampling is divided as purposive judgmental or convenience 
random sampling is based on some law rule or calculation whereas non random sampling is simply based on the value judgment of the investigator random gives more reliable result whereas non random gives biased results however both methods of sampling can be chosen considering the situation that's all for this topic thank you have a nice day